Hello everyone and welcome to the class. This is David A. Cox with PCClassesOnline.com and today we are talking about a little piece of software called Publisher Plus for Mac. You've probably never heard of it, but you're gonna love it. For those of you who grew up in like the 80s and 90s, you might remember something like Print Shop Deluxe. This is a little bit like a, a grown-up version of that. It's a fantastic piece of software. The other thing I want to mention right off the bat is it very much resembles the older version of Pages for Mac. Uh, a lot of people like the old version of Pages better than the current version. And for those of you out there who I just described, pay attention. Um, so Publisher Plus for Mac, it's made by a company called Pearl Mountain Soft. Uh, and the first thing I want to go over today is show you where to buy it. So check this out. If you go to their website, it's $39.90. Now there is an option to get a trial right here with a little download button. Of course, links to everything I'm about to mention are going to be in the description of this video. However, if you go to the Mac App Store and you just simply search for it, Publisher Plus, check this out, 20 bucks. So uh, save yourself a little bit of money, go right through the Mac App Store if you decide to get it. Um, and uh, just for full disclosure, uh, part of the reason why we're doing this class is more and more companies lately have been sending me uh, their software or their products saying, would you please consider reviewing them? And what I say to every single one of these companies is, look, I'm only going to review it if I like it. If I think it's going to be a good solution for a lot of people, then we'll both be very happy. But if not, I'm just not going to talk about it. So um, I've had a few months now to play with this software, and I really, really do enjoy it. And so uh, I'm genuinely recommending this to all of you. Let's go into the actual app here. You'll immediately see it definitely starts to resemble the old version of Pages. When you open it, you're brought to this template chooser. Now, if you're going through at the same time on your computer as I'm showing you this video and you don't see all of the same templates, don't worry. I'm going to show you where to go to get all of them. And what you'll find is that these templates are incredibly very well designed uh, for a template. So right at the top, we have, of course, your blank options. If you want a blank landscape or a blank portrait style template, you can use that. Flyers, like check that out. How cute is that for a bake sale? Looks a little bit better than Sharpie on a blank piece of paper. Okay. And the way that all of these templates, of course, work, it's what makes them a template, is all of this text, all of these images, it can all be swapped out. So it's very, very simple. And of course, I'm going to show you how to do that today. See a few more options of flyers here. Then we get into brochures, and you'll notice something a little bit different here. In some of these, you'll see we have this little arrow icon. And what that means is that for that particular template, it's a multi-page template. So for example, for this one for Discover Australia, flip it over, you can see it's obviously a trifold. It's going to have an inside and outside. Very, very cool. Okay. Bike biking lesson brochure. Okay, you could swap that with really anything. Have a bunch more here. Scroll down a little bit further. I'm going to scroll a little bit slowly so you can kind of get an idea for them. Newsletters. For those of you who are in some sort of an organization, whether it's your local Mac Users Club, which by the way I love uh, making guest appearances at, uh, or if it's something like a church group, something like that, these are fantastic. And a lot of these actually, um, in particular with the newsletters, usually the last page it has space for you to put a name and address that you could theoretically fold this, staple it, and mail it. Uh, the one thing, I have not seen an option um, so you can do a mail merge. That's the one downside, okay? So just be aware of that. whole bunch of different newsletters here, and there's more in a moment. Catalogs, okay, perfect for small business owners. Scrolling down a little further, we have posters for your holiday barbecue or whatever it may be. Scroll a little bit further. Magazines, perfect for whether you want to make it look like you just appeared on the cover of Fitness Magazine for kicking your butt over the winter or whatever it may be. Menus, um, I, I don't know if I would use this if I'm a restaurant that's you know currently up and running and been up and running for a while, but certainly for a lot of restaurants that are just opening up and fighting all of the costs of getting up and running, this might be a really, really good solution. Who knows, if you do enough work, it, it may work for a permanent uh, option. One thing I want to mention, by the way, uh, right now, is that you know when we're talking about printing, one of the things I always encourage people is to get these things professionally printed. Don't do it on your home printer, folks, okay? It's going to look, if it's especially for business, you want it to look really good. I'll give you a few different companies that I've found to be really, really good um, in the description of this video. The one thing you want to be aware of is that those printing companies can dramatically change in prices. 
So you can you know go from the the cheap side like Vistaprint to Moo.com, which makes possibly the best card stock I've ever seen in my life. Cards and invites, okay, not a ton of options here, but you know some, and there's more uh, that you'll be able to get in just a moment. Letters, for that I'd probably just use Word or Pages. Envelopes. Resumes. Uh, the resume templates they have tend to be a little bit on the flashy side, so I don't know if I would recommend it unless maybe you're an actor. Um, otherwise, you might want to go something a little bit more clean and professional. Business cards. If you're looking to design a business card, it, it's not bad to use this maybe as uh, a guide or as a source of inspiration, but you may want to check out, we have a separate class that we did uh, that Mark recorded uh, called Creating a Business Card with Canva. Link to that in the description. For those of you teachers out there, if you have, you know, little kids that you, you know, work with and you want to show them, you know, a good pat on the back, you can make your own certificates here. Very, very easy to mock those up. Uh, disc covers. Uh, for those of you millennials, discs, those are those things that you probably use as a coaster. And yes, I realize that I am technically a millennial and I make fun of myself all the time for that. So let's show you how to actually deploy one of these babies. How's that sound? So uh, let's just go into one of them. Uh, let's just go into a technology newsletter. Double click on it and it brings it all up here. And uh, let's go through how to navigate. Let me just expand my window first. So the, the um, where I would begin, if you're just getting started here, is go to the very, very top left where it says store. There's a little purse icon. Despite the fact that it says store, everything here is free, okay? So they have all of these additional templates that do not come with the software. And my theory for why they did this is they wanted to show you some of the best of the best right up front. Um, but they want to keep the size of the software small. So if you download these, you know, they do take up some space. It's not significant, but it does take up some space. So we have uh, packs for each category. So brochures, flyers, business cards, etc. So you can go through them, check them out. And if you decide that you like one of these, maybe you like these uh, menus, okay, you can click either the download button here, or if you do want everything, just hit download all. So, like all templates, all of this is swappable. So, anywhere you see text, you can just simply double click on it and highlight it just as if it were a Word document and put in whatever you want. Okay. Um, anywhere where there's images, you can swap those out too. And I want to show you how to do that. So here on the left-hand side here, uh, we have your photo libraries. Now, forgive me, uh, it says iPhoto over here. I do actually have a photos library that would normally show up. I had to do a little bit of work on the library, and that's the reason why it's not showing up. But for all of you, it should. And you'll see here you have this little triangle next to where it says your photo library. If you click on that, you'll see all of your various events, photos, and albums right here. So if you are doing this for something like business or a club, you might want to have your photos for that club organized and have them in something like an album so you can very quickly navigate to them. Okay. You can also just drag and drop a folder if you want over here. So let's say you're the kind of person that doesn't really use a photo program, but you use Dropbox. Okay. You can drop your Dropbox folder right over here and then navigate through that. The other thing that is worth mentioning is, yes, you can literally just drag any image from anywhere on your computer or the web. Like, um, well, here's the image for this class right here. I can literally just drag this onto my document, and there it is. One thing, though, I want to show you. Check this out. So I dragged it into the middle, and it gave me the whole graphic. But if instead, one moment, let's delete that. If instead I dragged it onto where there is another image, see how it highlights that image? When I let go, it swaps it. So that's that basically how you use a template. So if I want uh, this background image here with these arrows to be uh, maybe this nice sunset photo, I can just drag and drop that. Of course, that one doesn't do it. Oh, I know why. That's because that's actually built into the background in this case. Sorry, bad example. Let's go to a different one. Uh, let's just drag and drop it in here. There you go. It works fine. Okay. So um, that's about uh, getting photos. The other option that you do have is they have built-in clip art. And to get that, go right here, bottom left corner. looks a little bit like a flower. Click on that, and we have all of these different categories of clip art. Okay. Now, to my knowledge, and my disclosure here is that I am not a lawyer, to my knowledge, all of this clip art you can use for whatever you want. The exception to the rule is search results. So when you use this option here, you can actually search 
on Google Images for other images. Just be very careful with this stuff because you don't want to get sued over using someone else's photo. Quickly, we'll go over the stuff here at the top navigation bar. We have a generic text box. So if you want to add text somewhere where there is no text currently, just click on it. You can see it added this box here. It says double click to edit text. I'll just type in text here. And then you can drag that wherever you want. I can put it up here at the top. I can put it on top of an image, whatever I want. The other thing you'll notice here is that when you are clicked on something like an image uh, or text, you'll have these little arrows right here pointing up or down. That's just basically to change uh, where it applies, where, where it lives in terms of layers. So if you have two different images overlapping and you want one to be on top, you can use these arrows to determine that. Next thing we have here is shapes. So whenever you want something like an arrow, maybe to point something out, you can click on an arrow. And you use, of course, all these little dots around it to determine the thickness, the, the size of it in general, as well as, of course, over here on the right-hand side. Okay, so this here we're gonna where you're gonna change the style. So if you want something like a gradient, you can choose that right up here. If you don't, you can just change the color to something else. You can add shadows, reflections, similar stuff that you can do, of course, in pages. Moving on, we have the draw tool, something I don't sense a lot of you will probably be using. A very generic calendar. Okay, that's basically the only form that I've seen that it comes in. And backgrounds. Okay, so see how it, what I was talking about? That's actually the background. That's why I couldn't swap it out. So you can have a background that's either just a solid color, you can do a pattern, or you can do an image. If you do an image, uh, it's most likely going to be coming from your computer. You're going to tell it what kind of image. But there's a ton of different options here. You can see I can kind of scroll through, and it's just an easy way to kind of change up the look to your newsletter, whatever it is you're trying to produce. Okay, so you can have fun with it. Just gives it a little bit of style. Over here on the right hand side, okay, this area right here is what in pages we would refer to as simply the inspector. And it's going to change based on whatever it is you're clicked on. So for example, if I go to click on a photo, you know, it can figure out that I'm dealing with images here. So I can, you know, change the different style. I can add a reflection, for example, right there. Again, my shadows, okay. Images, okay, this is where you can go uh, when you're dealing with a photo. You can basically with one click, for example, make it black and white. Okay, or you can change the color. You can add, you know, a little bit of extra saturation if you really want those colors to pop out a little bit. Under the Arrange tab, okay, um, I want to show you a great example where this can be handy, especially in something like a newsletter. Uh, let's use this clip art of a girl right here. Okay, I'm going to just kind of shrink her down a little bit by clicking on the corner. And uh, if you want to kind of, you know, jazz up your newsletter, one of the tricks you can use is you can uh, cause the text to wrap around the image. And the way you do this is you're going to click on your image, go over here to Arrange, and click this box right here and check it out. See how the text just kind of molds its way around her? Pretty cool, right? Now that's only going to work on an image that has a transparency. Well, it's it's going to work on an image that's non-transparent, but uh, it's going to certainly look a hell of a lot better on images that are transparencies. One little downside uh, about the software, someone brought this up during the live class. No, there does not appear to be an instant alpha option uh, within this software, unfortunately. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with instant alpha, Sadly, it's not an option here, but um, who knows, maybe one day they'll add it in as a feature. I'd say that would certainly be good in my book. Okay, some of the other things you'll find over here, if I'm, for example, not clicked on any object right here, is you can change the page size. So if you're not doing a, you know, an A4 size, you can switch this over so it'll print to an envelope, you know, legal size, whatever you want, just by clicking on one of these options right here. When you're done with your project, you have a whole bunch of different options for what you can do with it. We have a share button where you can email it, message it, airdrop, tweet it, Facebook it, or Flickr it. Who uses Flickr anymore? You have all those options right there with one click. You can also hit export. Now, if you hit export, you are sending this out as a basically a locked document, essentially. I know that there are there's pieces of software out there that can do modifications, but essentially, it's a done deal. It's a locked product. So PDF is uh, the most universal format for something like a newsletter or a menu. It's also going to maintain very, very high quality if you're having it professionally printed. Uh, there's one little tip I would like to give you that goes slightly off topic. For those of you out there who create big newsletters, you may be aware that PDF files can be giant. 
Um, there was a magazine that I used to have a relationship with where they would create their magazine as a PDF and it would be like a 140 megabyte file. You can't email that. So they would hire me to shrink it down. And there's this great little piece of software that maintains really high quality and uh, shrinks it down. I would be able to get that 140 megabyte file usually down to about 5 megabytes. And uh, let me see if I can show it to you. It's right here. PDF shrink. Uh, we'll probably do a separate class on that at some point in the near future, but I will put a link to where you can get it if you want in the description of this video. Other formats that you can export to, PDF, P, uh, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, no one uses BMP anymore, and PSD, Photoshop. Hit cancel on that one. Uh, print, I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, and that really is it. It's a really, really simple piece of software. I encourage you to just have fun with it. Um, oh, one last thing I, I do want to mention before we go. Here at the very bottom, okay, you'll see here that we have these arrows and a book. Okay, that's for navigating between which page you're on. You may have already picked up on that. If you run out of pages and you need additional pages, you can click on this book and you'll see there's a little plus symbol here. Also, if you want to remove one of these pages, like let's say I don't really need this last page here, you can hit the little minus symbol and that will remove it. One quick little note I would like to make because I know the uh, manufacturer of this software is watching this video. Uh, I want to point out to you guys uh, something that I can't tell if it's a bug on my end or if it's something in the software that is affecting most people. I noticed that a lot of times, uh, not always, uh, you can't actually move these pages around. So if you want page one to become three, Theoretically, it should be that you just drag it and drop it. You'll notice it's not sticking. So uh, to the manufacturers of Publisher Plus, Pearl Mountain Soft, you might want to check that out. Um, I suspect for those of you who are watching this video, it's something that maybe they're already aware of. They just have yet to release an update uh, to correct that little bug. But I've noticed that seems to happen sometimes, but not all the time. Very, very strange. Anyways. Publisher Plus for Mac is a fantastic little piece of software. There's so many different templates to choose from. And for those of you out there who are like me and are just a total idiot when it comes to graphic design, and that's, by the way, why we have Mark Collier, because he's a genius, um, this is just a lifesaver. It's so easy to use. It's so user-friendly. Uh, bravo to them. I think they did a really, really great job. Thank you for watching the class, everyone. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that little thumbs up like button. We do appreciate it. Leave us a comment. Let us know if you enjoyed it, if you decided to purchase it, if you like it. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Also, you can hit that little subscribe button. That way you can uh, stay tuned and find out when we come out with our new classes. This is David A. Cox with PCClassesOnline.com. Class dismissed.